keep watching and see what is happening in the next questions hello i'm here me anjan murtacharji experienced in o and a level mathematics let's see what is happening in next question so see this one already we have seen some formula from uh, ap and gp applying this formula let's see how to solve this one seven term and 10 term of an arithmetic progressions are 158 and 149 respectively find the common difference and the first term of the progression okay now let's see what ways to solve we know uh, i mean seven term and seven term uh, i mean a plus 6d a plus 6d equals to 158 and then 10 term that is a plus 9d equals to 149 now there are two equations this is number one this is number two we can solve these two equations simultaneously let me substitute this one here a plus 6d equals to 158 now let us subtract if we subtract if we subtract here this a will be cancelled then this will be 3d then uh, if you uh, we subtract here it will be i mean minus 9 so therefore d equals to i mean minus 3 now let me substitute substitute d equals to minus 3 in 1 so we are having here a plus 6 times minus 3 equals to 158 if you simplify this you are having a equals to 176 so the your answer is becoming now answer and d is minus 3 and a is 176 now in this question there is given find the least number of terms of the progression for the sum to be negative this is also three marks so least number of terms sum we have learn what is the formula for sum sum is uh, s n equals to n by 2 2a plus n minus 1 d that means equals to not equals to it is becoming negative so less than zero sum is becoming zero now let me substitute all these values here d is minus 3 and a is 172 so n by 2 2 times 176 plus n minus 1 and d is minus 3 less than 0 so let me simplify this one 172 times 2 is 352 minus 3n plus 3 less than 0 if we simplify this one it's becoming n i mean 350 i mean 3 to this is 5 minus 3n i mean uh, less than 0 if you simplify more n 3n minus 355 greater than 0 so whether n can be less than zero or n can be greater than 355 by 3 now if you simplify this one it will be uh, n greater than if you divide this one 118.3 that means n equals to 119 so uh, the the least number this cannot be possible because number of terms cannot be negative find the least number of terms of the progression so least number of terms will be one one nine so thank you for watching uh, this sums and if you have any more question write me and i'll try to give you the more better answer much for watching question number uh, four now let us start question number five me 
Anjan Bhattacharji. I'm experienced in teaching O and A level mathematics. I'm trying to explain you uh, additional mathematics. I mean, paper one, I mean, variant 12 uh, uh, complete question papers. I mean, paper one complete papers. So let's see, go through the papers. And if you have any question, you can ask me in uh, comment section. So see here, this is the question, find the uh, coefficient of x square in the expansion, this one. And this is, you know, we you have done, got the question from the binomial expansion. So this is also very easy maths. You can easily try this one. Uh, let's see, first of all, expand this part. Let me keep it same, this one, x minus three by x. Then this is x to the power five, uh, uh, plus five, I mean, C1, let me write here, five C1, X to the power four, two by X plus, I mean, five C2, x cube uh, 4 by x square plus 5c3 x square 4 by x cube so let me keep up to this since we are going to find out the coefficient of x square Okay, so let me keep up to this and you can proceed in that way. Now, let me write here x minus 3 by x and this is becoming x to the power 5, uh, I mean plus 10 x cube plus 40 x, see here 40 x. Okay, here we are having divided by x, so there is no way to find out x, so let me drop this part now coefficient of x square if you multiply this one the coefficient of x square if you multiply this part and this part you are having x square now if you multiply this part and this one you are having x square so let me write here coefficient of x square is uh, 40 into 1 see x into 40x that means 40 into 1 plus this is minus 3 into 10 so you are having 40 minus 30 that is coefficient of x square is uh, 10 so we have done uh, we have done question number five successfully now let us see uh, uh, next one so thank you very much uh, keep watching for uh, i'm anjan mutsarji experienced in teaching o and a level mathematics and if you have any question, any queries regarding maths, please ask me. So let us see question number six. This is question number six. This is see this first number. Uh, give the given that the f x equals to x square plus two x minus three for x greater than equal minus one. Given that the minimum value of x square plus two x minus three occurs when x equals to minus one explain why fx has an inverse okay uh, there are some informations given this is uh, fx has an inverse we know that uh, there are different types of functions i mean uh, if a function to be an inverse so it must be one to one so we can write here uh,
Why FX has an inverse since? The function is one to one. Okay. Uh, in the restricted domain. Okay, this is the reason. Uh, to, to have an inverse function. Now see the uh, question B. On the uh, axis below, uh, we need to draw the graph, sketch the gra graph y equals to fx and level each graph and state intercept of the coordinates. So the question is that fx equals to x squared plus 2x minus 3 we need to sketch this one. Before sketching, we should have a few sound, a few knowledge regarding these types of maths. First of all, we must do completing the square uh, x plus 2 by 2 whole square minus 2 by 2 whole square minus 3. So this is becoming x plus 1 whole square this is one whole square minus one that is minus four because we know that x square plus bx equals to x plus b by two whole square minus b by two whole square already explained that is to get an inverse function the function must be one to one and how to sketch the graph of inverse function when you are sketching the graph of inverse function, that times you need to remember that uh, you must draw the graphs for y equals to fx. Then draw a line for y equals to x. Then reflect the graph. Uh, I mean, what you have already, I mean, sketched y equals to fx with y equals to x. Reflect the graph y equals to fx with y equals to x. What graphs? you are having this is the graphs for inverse function so let's see what we is to do another things we know that uh, uh, we have got it from coordinate geometry on x axis y goes to zero and y axis x goes to zero let's see what is happening so this is the graph the domain is given for fx x greater than equal minus one so let me draw the graph for x greater than equal minus one Min for minus one we are having here minus four so for minus one we are having uh, minus one minus four okay now this is the turning point minus one minus four sorry So this is minus one, minus four, minus one, minus four will be here. Minus four will be here. Minus one, minus four. Then if you put here zero, you are having three, You're having three. Now on this axis, fx equals to zero now x square plus 2x minus 3 equals to zero so x square plus 3x minus x minus 3 equals to zero so x equals to minus 3 and x equals to 1 so another point will be here x equals to 1 this is 1 0 so we can Join all this point. Okay. Now let me draw y goes to x. Let me draw the graph for y goes to x. 
to the y goes to x. Let me put these values here, minus four reflected, minus four, one, minus four, one, then zero, one, this is minus four, one. This is what, zero, minus three, so this will be minus three, zero. Now, the graph will be This is the inverse function that is y equals to f inverse x and this is the graph for y equals to fx. So this is that's the things what is given from functions that is um, what ways we can make inverse function what's the rules behind that then how to uh, I mean uh, sketch the inverse functions graph and level each graphs and state the intercept on the coordinates axis. So, uh, thank you very much. I am Anjan Bhattacharji. Uh, I am experienced in teaching O and A level mathematics. If you have any queries, ask me, contact me in regular classes. I think I can give you more information. The winter, I mean variant 12 question paper for additional mathematics. To find out the coordinates of y, ln three times root two squared, that means two minus five, and then two times root two plus one. See here, three times two, that is six, six minus five, that is one, ln one, zero. So ln one, zero, numerator is zero, the whole thing will be zero. So coordinates will be root two, zero. Now let us find out the gradient. I mean, we know that formula is y minus y one equals to minus one by dy dx x minus x1 this is the uh, formula for normal so find out dy dx this is c here i mean uh, u by b i mean we need to apply quotient rule so let me we know that formula d dx of u by v goes to v square v du dx minus u dv dx. So let me apply down one is v, upper one is u. So let me apply, so two x plus one whole square, then two x plus one, the dx of three x square minus five, we must write here ln, we should not make mistake, then minus sign here, then ln 3x squared minus 5 ddx of 2x plus 1. I just applied this formula. Now, let us see what is happening. Uh, let me keep all these things same. So 2x plus 1 ddx of this one, we need to uh, write here 3x squared minus uh, because ddx of um, ln x equals to one by x. Then we must apply chain rule. For this reason, we must write here six x, then minus five, that is zero. Minus ln three x squared minus five, the dx of x is one, so yeah, you are having two, one is zero. Let me write it here. Okay, now let me fix the, put the values of root two here. We won't do more simplification and it will be more difficult. So let me put here some values of, uh, I mean, X. So two times root two plus one, then we can write here three times root two square minus five into three times root two minus two ln three two square minus five divided by 2 
root 2 plus 1 whole square. Now let us simplify this. Uh, when we are solving that time we can find out here 2 root 2 plus 1 whole square okay now let me simplify this this is becoming uh, this is becoming 1 then 6 root 2 then 2 root 2 plus 1 here 6 minus 5 that is 1 0 so l and 0 0 so there is nothing now we can simplify this one. This is 2 by 2 root 2 plus 1. Now let me rationalize this. We know how to do rationalization. That means uh, we can multiply here 2 root 2 minus 1, then 2 root 2 minus 1. So it is becoming now. 2 root 2 whole square that is 4 to the 8 minus 1 then 6 I mean to the 12 6 to the 12 12 to 24 24 minus 6 to 2 so it is becoming now 24 by 7 minus 6 by 7 root 2 this is the gradient okay I think this is not so easy to solve uh, we need to concentrate more than to solve this one. So this is not so easy, but I already told you need to practice more uh, to get the better result and more clear answers. You need to practice. So this one here, that is we have got the gradient. Now, if we use this, to find out normal in the equation y minus y1 is the normal y1 is 0 goes to dy dx 24 by 7 minus 6 by 7 root 2 then x minus root 2 so y equals to that means we can simplify more or we can keep the answers in that way. There will be one minus obviously because normal there is a minus sign. Or we can simplify more or we can keep the answers in that way or we can write in decimals. So thank you very much for watching this. I mean part we will see next part what ways to solve this is easy this is c1 mark here the approximate find approximate change in y as x increases from so x it is initially root 2 and finally it is becoming root 2 plus h so increase in x delta x equals to root 2 plus h minus root 2 plus h minus root 2 that is h so we are finding out delta y just to what so we know that delta x by delta y equals to is approximately equals to dx by you can write in that way that's the used to write delta y by delta x is approximately equals to dy by dx so delta y is equals to we know that dy by dx is 24 by 7 minus 6 root 2 into uh, this delta x is h so this is the answer
So this is the question number seven we have done successfully. We have done question number seven successfully. So let us go for question number eight. So thank you very much again. Keep watching and more attention is necessary to solve next one.